All right, so 2007 Honda CRV, 2.4 liter engine. This one's in here today because it does not start. Well, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So the customer says it kind of sounds like it's a battery, but they just changed the battery for the same reason. So they bought this car used. One day they just had issues starting it and it sounded like a weak battery. He said the battery was five years old. We had trouble cranking it over and I went ahead and changed the battery. He said it was fine for a couple months and now the problem is there again. So the customer believes that there may be a battery drain on this CRV or it's just a bad battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and check it out and see what we find. But first, let me see if it does it right now. There you go. And it won't start. Customer says sometimes it'll start right away and sometimes it takes five, six, seven times and then it'll start so now that we caught it intermittently starting and not starting let's go under the hood and do some quick checks all right so here's the battery now right away the first thing that i noticed looking at this battery is this hold down is not doing its job this terminal looks tight this terminal not so much look at that that right there can be an intermittent no start all right that accompanied with this battery hold down not doing its job will give you the symptoms that we're having right now, which is a slow crank, intermittent no start. Pay attention to these little things. So right now what I'm gonna do, put this battery the way it's supposed to go and see what's going on with this terminal, why we can't tighten it. I might need to replace the terminal. This one looks like it's part of this cable. So if we can't do the terminal by itself, we might have to go to the junkyard and get this little chingadera right there. Let me go ahead and fix this the way it's supposed to be. Positive is already loose. Looks like this thing isn't even in here properly because the battery was going like, let me see. Okay, so we have these two little chingaderas right here and they have to line up with those two holes right there. And it looks kind of bent. So it looks to me like this car was in some kind of accident, if you ask me. Because, um, look at this headlight. Pretty clean. And this is a passenger headlight. Not so clean. Well, not so dirty either, but not so clean. Not as clean as this one. This one looks new. Anyways, this is what's happening. If you look right here on this metal tray, this little chingadera right here is not letting this plastic tray sit in there properly. You can see right here where it was hitting on this little groove right here. That little groove aligns with this. And because of that, the tray sitting a little bit to the right and these holes right here do not align with those two right there. So the tray doesn't fit in there properly. And that's why the battery doesn't fit in there properly. Now look, this is the way they had it. If you look, that little groove actually aligns with a little notch, but the holes do not align. They're a little bit to the right. So what I gotta do is move this to the left. So let me hammer it flat. Then we can drop the tray in, put the battery and put everything back together. Oh, shit. Now we'll give this a shot, a shot of tequila. Oh, okay. So that right there is nice and flat. This right here too, this, this is in the way. Let's camp, let's get this out of the way. This right here is on the way too. So yeah, I think this car was hit. Ugh. Blech. Nasty. Does this still help in the property? It looks like this. The more you look, the more you find. It looks like this piece is supposed to go right there and there's supposed to be a bolt holding it in. Now this harness is supposed to be on this side. Dude, everything's wrong with this car. Oh yeah, for sure, this car was hit. You can see how this piece right here came apart. This little ear right here is actually supposed to bolt down in that hole and it's far from it. Uh, I'm gonna put the tray back on here as long as that's good and the battery doesn't have any movement, then I'm happy with it, but he's gonna be aware of this. So now, here, nice and easy. Are we in? Yeah, that was too easy. All right, so now we're in. And now that it fits in there properly, we can put the battery on there and put everything back together. But before I do that, let me just see what's going on with this terminal right here. All right, so now looking at this terminal, doesn't look like I have a lot of wire to work with. I mean, I can undo this, 
cut the wire right here and then we can use one of these universal terminals but like i said before this right here is just a temporary fix and the best way for me to do it is to actually replace this whole harness either from the dealer or from the junkyard the cheapest and the best fix here is i'm going to try to open up these chingaderas right there so that i can save this piece of wire and then i'll use one of these universal terminals and i think it'll be the best thing as opposed to replacing the whole harness which goes to the alternator to the starter and over here to the fuse box plus i still gotta go get it and it's gonna be more labor so it's gonna be more expensive so let me see if i can undo these right here then we'll see how it turns out these are just crimped on here so i should be able to It's coming apart. I agree. Yeah. You can see how it's just crimped on there. I opened it up and came out pretty easy. So right now I'm gonna use that universal terminal and save this guy some money. Check it out, that's what it looks like. Just make sure the two wires that go in there are nice and tight and make sure that this is not coming off. Okay, that's there. I'm gonna use a 19 millimeter to hammer this down. The 19 fits around the positive and a 17 fits around the negative. So let me just put it here on top of the terminal and hammer it down. Check it out, I got everything buttoned up, got that terminal nice and tight. The negative is nice and tight. And I got all this back together. Now this little harness that I thought went in front of the radiator hose, doesn't go in front, it goes tucked in up here. But the clips that are holding it in are no longer there. So I guess it had a pretty good amount of front end damage. But anyways, uh, quick tip of the day, always keep these terminals on hand. You'd be surprised how many times you're gonna have to replace terminals. So I keep a set of these, which are universal for this type. And I also keep a set of this style right here, which is used on Toyotas and Nissans. And you'd be surprised how many times you're gonna be changing these terminals out. So I always keep them on my hand, especially if you're doing mobile work, cause they come in handy and they'll make you that quick, easy money. Right now we're gonna try it out, see if it cranks normal and it should, of course. Now the only thing here and the reason why I really don't like using this style of terminals is because now we can't use the covers that were on here. Now we can't use this. I mean, we could throw that on there like that, but this thing is probably gonna fly off. Now, the last thing that I wanna do is just do a quick parasitic drain test to make sure that there's nothing staying on that's draining our battery. And if everything checks out good, then that's gonna be it for this one. Okay, here we go. Starts up fine. It's crazy how it's always something simple. Let's go back under the hood. All right, so right now what I'm gonna do is just a parasitic drain test, make sure that there's nothing draining this battery. Now we go negative to negative post, positive to the negative terminal. And on the multimeter, we're gonna put the red lead on the big A-hole. We'll put it on amperage, there we go, it's on amperage. And we got 17 milliamps. So I'm gonna set that here, we got about 16. I'm gonna unlock the car. So we got about three, 376 milliamps now. 311 milliamps. I'm gonna lock it. Once everything goes to sleep, we should have under 50 milliamps. And then this, this will tell us that everything's good. Everything went to sleep. There's nothing draining the battery. 20, 33. I'm happy with that. No more than 50 milliamps. Doesn't look like we have a battery drain. I mean, there is a possibility that it's intermittent and we're not catching it right now. But right now, it's good. All right, so it looks like that's gonna be it for this one. 2007 Honda CRV, slow crank, sometimes no start, bad battery terminal, and loose battery hold down. There's nothing draining our battery. We're under 50 milliamps on this CRV, so we're gonna call this one a fix. So don't overlook the basics. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. I just went in there, and Hector 
is gonna be running three Honda Civics with spoon engines. <laughs> 